All right, guys, so the last work in progress video, like I mentioned in the previous one, I want this one to mostly focus on building these little resin figures to go along with your kits if you chose to do that, uh, like I'm going to do with mine. But uh, before I do that, actually, I wanted to do some weathering on this, actually, just a little bit, just a little bit, not really a whole lot. So I'll just go over that quickly, just a couple things that I'm going to do just to add a little tiny bit of weathering to this. Uh, and then we'll focus on how to build uh, your little resin figure there. So. First thing I'm gonna do is use these Mr. Weathering colors here, ground brown and grayish brown here. I'm gonna make sure you shake it up really well first. And these do have like a little BB in there, whatever that should help you to mix up the pigment in there really well. Now, unlike the accent color panel line washes, these don't have a brush attached on the inside of there, so you'll have to use some other sort of brush, whatever you might want to use for that. So I think for this one, I'm just gonna once again use. Uh, the SMS brush is a little bit smaller one just to like apply it to where we want and then I'll use a different one to do some kind of cleanup on this. So basically you're just going to be using this to apply just some kind of like targeted filtering in some areas. So I'm not going to like doing, be doing like filtering all over like the whole thing. Uh, but just in a few areas around here and that'll just give it uh, just kind of look of some some dirt going on I suppose and then just with a different brush this is just like a soft one I'll just have this uh, wetted with some lighter fluid and just kind of um, brush this in here just kind of loosely And once that's done, it should be very subtle, at least that's what I'm going for in there. So you'll see just a very slight difference between something that's clean, not done yet, and something that has just a little bit of, just kind of that dirt filter kind of added to it. All right, so it took a little while, but once all that filtering is done, then the other step that I want to do is just a little bit of dry brushing. Now, um, dry brushing, the color that you use for it, people can use all sorts of different colors of uh, gray, brown, black, uh, metallic colors you can use. I'm just going to use uh, black, just some Tamiya flat black here, just because, like I said, I'm trying to make it really super subtle. So I just wanted to have just a little bit of roughness on some of the edges here with this flat black. I uh, don't think, and then a lot of like people for like chipping and stuff on the edges will use uh, multiple tones. I don't even think I'm going to need to use multiple tones, but we'll see how it goes. I might end up doing like a really super tiny bit and like a secondary tone, but um, for this one, I'm going to use this Nazca for dry brush brush here. So you guys may know that Nazca is uh, Naoki's kind of particular line of paint products from Gaia, but they also make some different uh, modeling tools as well. Not a lot. I think there's like some brushes and files, just a few things. Uh, uh, so I actually haven't tried this brush yet, but it's a special brush, particularly I guess for dry brushing. So let's try it out. Now the key to dry brushing, like all weathering, is to go as subtle as possible, as little as possible at first, unless you know, like you you know you're going for like a super heavy look, because you want to go subtle and you can always add more. It's much easier to add more than it is to take away. So in my case, I'm only wanting to do a little bit, but if you wanted a little bit more weathered look, you know, just start a little bit, then you can always add more. Also for dry brushing, you want as little paint on the brush as possible. So I'm just going to get a little bit on there and just sort of dab it off on here. Just kind of get a bunch off here on the paper towel so that there's going to be kind of like almost nothing left on there. And then, We'll go to our part and just start brushing on it here. You just want to take like long sweeping wide strokes over the edges so that you're just barely catching a little bit of paint on there. And that is, yeah, like I said, again, all that you're going to want to start off with. And for me, that's all I'm going to want to keep for mine. 
So you can see on that edge, I've just got a little bit of a line going on that edge there. That is exactly how I want that to be. Just really light, really subtle like that. So that's cool. Another way you can actually do this, uh, if you want to go super subtle like that actually, is just with the, just a regular pencil, the lead pencil, just kind of uh, scratching that on the edge. And that also works slightly different look, but that will also be a really good technique if you just want some really subtle chipping and dry brushing sort of look you get for that. All right, so as for the resin figure that we're gonna be building with this, it is, I believe 120 scale or something like that. Anyway, it's just a small scale figure here of uh, that girl character, Atra. And like in sort of like coming out of like a space suit. And I'll put a picture of it the, there on the screen so you guys can see. So let's just take a look at a couple of the parts here. So you'll notice a lot like Gunpla, you have like tabs on here, and these are pore tabs from just the same as the way Gundam uh, model parts are molded. These are also molded in molds, and so you have this, these parts where the resin is flowing into the part, and so that's where you have these uh, mold bits on there which you need to remove on some of these parts and on some like here's the face part it's just a little bit on there and this part and this is a an area that is going to be hidden by the hair anyway so it's just easy enough to just cut this off but on some of these other parts here like this is the part here for the neck uh you can just cut that part off i'm probably gonna have to clean this up some more as well so this is the part for like the upper the torso the neck and the arms but this kit uh as you can see like at the base of the neck there it has that little tab and that is supposed to be where this is fitting up into the head there so this kit like the way that this kit is made it has like these sort of pegs molded on there. So you can see like here and here at the bottom of the leg. There's tabs already molded together with it that's supposed to make it easy for you to just be able to tab the different parts, uh, just plug the different parts in together. So like this is the part uh, where the leg is meant to plug down into there. So these are meant to just line up. But just for me, I'm just gonna, just because, I don't know. I think it's probably gonna be easier to just cut these off and just uh, do it in sort of my own normal way of how I do these, but let me just see here. Yeah, I think it's gonna be easier to just cut off these entirely and just do uh, the attaching the parts in the way that I would normally do it. So I'll just show you guys how I would normally do it. And that's probably what I'm gonna end up doing for this kit as well. So anyway, the other thing just to keep in mind, uh, guys, is that I'm certainly no expert when it comes to resin figures and stuff. So this is just gonna be a very simple way that I put mine together. You guys can follow it if you want. But if you guys are really interested in getting into like resin figures and stuff, especially like the larger, more typical ones that you would uh, normally see like in 1 8 to 1 6 scale around that air size range, now I'd actually recommend you guys check out uh, Leona's workshop. It's a pretty good channel, I think. It's one that I usually look to uh, for this sort of stuff. But all right, so anyway, the first step that I want to do is basically just getting rid of like the big tabs. And so I'm not going to worry about cleaning everything up super well. Uh, because that's going to come uh, later. So the first bit is just going to be getting rid of these tabs. And as you can see, basically I use a combination of just like these old nippers for just cutting off big chunks. And then I'll just use my hobby knife, just basically as the same as I would with uh, building Gumpla, just to clean them up just a little bit better. And like I said, I'm not worried about getting them really perfect right now. Because another thing that these will have is, uh, again, similar to regular Gumpla and any plastic model kit, they'll have like mold lines going along there where the two halves of the mold meet together. And with these usually being in like white or off-white or like yellow color uh, resin for most resin kits, uh, it's kind of really hard to see the mold lines. Uh, so I find it easier to just kind of remove as much as I can at first that I can like very clearly see. Uh, then you need to wash the parts to get the mold release off of them so that they will take paint easier. And then uh, spray a coat of primer on them and then the coat of primer will make it a lot easier to see where I need to clean up some more parts and do a little bit more sanding and things like that. So uh, I just want to first get the parts, just uh, get like the major nubs on uh, tabs cut off of here. And I'll probably end up using these a little bit more later, but this is another really uh, helpful tool that I found for doing this kind of thing. These are from Wave. Uh, these are just uh, chisels and I have uh, three different uh, sizes, one millimeter, two millimeter and 3.5 millimeter. Uh, but what these are, and they're really handy just because it's just all one thing here. You can screw off the bait here, and this is where the actual chisel is. And then you just turn that around and it screws on back the other way to act as your grip. So it's a cap to protect the chisel uh, and a grip. You don't have like a separate piece, so I like that this is just all like kind of one thing and keep it together. Or I suppose if you wanted, you can screw this onto the back end like that. I suppose if that's more comfortable, but whatever is more comfortable for you. I'll typically just keep that at the end there. So for getting into areas where it's kind of harder for the hobby knife to reach. So for example, the tab in here was located 
on this part where it's sort of like a concave surface so the knife being flat can't reach to there so it's easier to just dig that out a little bit uh, here with this curved chisel. So once all that main cleanup is done, before we go and give these a bath, actually what I want to do first is I will drill some of these parts. So I think some of like the pre-molded uh, like pegs in the parts, I think some of those I may use like this one, just going like connecting the two halves of the body together. Uh, I'll try to maybe use that, but some of the other ones I will need to pin. I will just opt to pin rather than using the pre-molded parts there. So uh, basically what you need is a set of drills. And it's so like this part here, we've got the pre-molded hole there, but it doesn't quite fit quite right. So what I'm just going to do is just try drilling that out a little bit uh, and see how this fits. If it's not really, really wanting to fit really well, then I'll just pin this with a rod, with just a brass rod, which we'll take a look at in a moment. But just give this a try first. So there we go. And it's a pretty good fit, I think. So I think that'll probably work uh, for now. Maybe I'll end up... Uh, maybe putting we'll see how it looks once it's primed I can get a kind of a better look if there's any kind of gap or anything in there I may end up putting a little bit of putty in between these parts just to get rid of any gap But it doesn't look like like that's going to be a problem with these two particular parts anyway So uh, let's move on to a part that I know I am going to want to pin and that is going to be actually from the bottom of the leg now from the bottom of the leg actually needs to go through this part and then into this part down here so I know I first need to just drill, where I put that, just put the drill down, drill a hole through here and then at the bottom of the leg there where there actually was that peg and I cut it off. I probably should have just left it on there actually. But since I cut that off, I'm going to have to use a pin here instead. So this is once again just some two millimeter A-line. Uh, yeah, I only need a little bit of this, not a whole lot. I'll just cut a little bit more than what I'm expecting to need. I can always cut it down more later. but. That will just fit up into there, through that part there for the kind of parts of the clothes. And then that needs to plug down into here. So I just need to uh, drill this hole out a little bit more. This hole is already here from where the peg was molded, but it's not really very deep. So I'm gonna just make this a little bit deeper here. So as I can tell, it's definitely going to be a lot longer than it needs to be. So, so go ahead and cut a little bit off of that and should fit pretty well here. I think it's still gonna be a bit long, so I'm gonna have to cut it again, but yeah, I'll cut a little bit more off of that. There we go, easy enough. And once again here, the gap uh, between the parts does look pretty fine, actually. This kit seems like it's molded actually pretty well, which is good. So then just like the whole body is gonna be something like that. We do have this little piece here is actually this piece to hold this, which I think goes something like that, it's meant to be like pinned in the toe like that for holding this up because she's meant to be like sort of floating so I'll worry about pinning that maybe a little bit later. These arm parts for like the suit will go onto the side here so I'll worry about uh, pinning those. Then just want to check out the head here as well. So we have a pre-molded peg here for the head in, for like the face into the back of the hair but I need to drill out this hole here for that. You can see somehow that hole got kind of completely lost. And it also seems to be of a bigger size. The other pegs were two millimeter, but this one's larger. So let's see if a 2.5 millimeter is right. Yep, there we go. That's like, that seems right anyway. And it fits really tightly there for the head. Then just the part for the front of the head uh, just needs to sit on there like that. And then this should just go right on top of here pretty simply. I think I need to drill out the part there in the base of the head a little bit as well, but you kind of, get the idea anyway that it's not quite straight at the moment but it's gonna look something like that pretty much so all right all right so here is the dry fit uh, everything is pinned in place for the time being except for the part for the front of the hair which in the end i'll just glue stick on there with a little drop of super glue so i don't worry about pinning that at the moment but uh, everything fits pretty good actually so i'm just now going to take her apart again uh go use some soapy water and just the old toothbrush and just get everything all nice and clean get a coat of primer sprayed on here and then we'll come back and see where we need to do a little bit more sanding a little bit more cleanup on this okay now all primed here's how she's gonna look well at least with the kind of thin coat of primer over it and i have got it uh, stuck down here with some tack because otherwise it doesn't balance on its own i'll have to ultimately pin this to the base uh, so that it can actually stand because although it's like kind of meant to look balanced it doesn't actually really balance well on its own 
So now it's just a matter of going in, you can see like this uh, minor imperfections there, like kind of where the tab was on that, and it's just like kind of a little bit of a, like a rough edge around here, just sanding that. And I like to use these soft type sanding sticks that are kind of like spongy, so that they're not gonna create any like hard edges. Uh, they're still kind of soft. Uh, and as you're sanding it away, you can see where the where the dips were, where the imperfections were. They'll stand out more just because they're the places that are still got some uh, primer in there. Once that's sanded well enough, uh, then we can move on to the next part. It's just a matter of making our way through the parts here. Now sometimes you will have bubbles in your parts, and it looks like unfortunately we got a bubble on the top of each shoulder here, so I will have to put a little bit of putty in there. Um, probably we'll just use a little tiny bit of epoxy putty and just kind of stuff it in there. And then I'll have to resand that down again. So not the worst thing in the world overall. Everything else doesn't look like there's any bubbles anywhere, which is good. And then like on this part here, for example, like on the side of the hip, the line here between the skin and the pants is almost kind of lost. Like here on the front, it's fine. There's like a good definition there, but here on the side, there's a hardly any definition there so I will just maybe just rescribe that edge a little bit and also on the clothes like the spacesuit here there's a couple areas where like the lines like this line that's supposed to be scribed through there is a little bit lost it's a little bit kind of fading away a little bit so I have to just kind of try to rescribe that a little bit so it's just a matter of kind of cleaning up some of the details and actually the the mold lines on this seem pretty good They're, the mold lines aren't really too apparent really so just a little bit of sanding on the mold lines and just uh, fixing some of the details a little bit and that's pretty much it then it'll need to be washed again and then we can get into painting and priming again all right so i gave that putty plenty of time to cure and went ahead and sanded this side already so that is all done then this side i just need to go ahead and just sand that down as well and then once that is all looks pretty good anyway we'll have to check it we'll i will give these parts another just kind of quick rinse off just to get the dust off them again and then i'll give them another light coat of primer just to check for anything else that still needs to be fixed up or not and if not hopefully everything should be okay then we can just move straight on into the painting oh yeah and i also had some leftover epoxy putty after filling those gaps so i just rolled this into basically just like a uh, pipe and then just carved it into the shape of like a water bottle and then stuck this on a little tiny 0.5 millimeter rod to be able to stick this onto like her suit so it's like floating in there because she's in like a floating pose it seems kind of weird actually that this is uh, making the barbatos into like a desert type which is not in space and then the pilot figure is like floating which looks like it's supposed to be like in space it's kind of i realized that doesn't really quite match and so it's also like a floating water bottle also adds to that kind of zero g look of the pilot figure but anyway it's okay all right here, so with coat of primer and then had a couple parts I needed to touch up just a little bit more. Otherwise, most everything was pretty okay. Uh, now we can actually move on to the colors. So I'm gonna paint the skin first and in order to do that, we need to get those parts that are skin tone back to white and not gray for underneath the skin tone color. So I'm going to give the parts that are skin tone her face, like the upper body parts and then like the main body part, uh, another coat of primer just with white primer in this case and then we can paint the skin tone on there. All right, so we'll give that primer some time to cure a little bit, and in the meantime, we can go ahead and paint some of the other colors. So for the hair color, I'm gonna use this number 321 light brown. Should be just right about a good color for her hair, I reckon. Then for the main color of the spacesuit, I'm gonna use a little bit of a combination here. This is number 25, dark sea gray, which is kind of dark. Uh, so I think maybe it'll be a little bit too dark. So I'm gonna lay that like over the whole thing. And then I'm gonna uh, use number 315, gray FS16440 as a kind of uh, highlight color for the spacesuit. So hopefully that'll work out. All right, then for the always tricky skin tone, I'm gonna use a dual tone attack here, although the 
kit is so tiny, I don't know if it's really going to end up being all that noticeable, but first I'm going to go with number 52, with the, which is uh, Notes Flesh White for the base color, base tone, which is just sort of like barely off-white. Uh, and then do some of the shadowing here with number 54, Notes Flesh Orange, and just kind of basically do like your... Uh, Sort of like pre-shading like you would do with Gumpla. Uh, and then go back over that with a thin coat of uh, Notes Flesh uh, White again, <laughs> just to kind of blend the two. So it's a little bit of a process. And again, if you guys want some more information about painting skin tone, uh, I highly recommend you guys check out Leona's workshop. She did a couple of really great videos recently about doing skin tone. So. Alright guys, so here it is. Uh, I've got all the base painting done there other than obviously, and then I've gone ahead and done just some panel lining, just some wash in there to just to kind of bring out the details on the space suit especially, and then also a little bit of detail painting, painting in some of those little bits on there as well. I didn't go with the official color, the color scheme of the original kit here for this, I changed up the colors a little bit. And I'm a little bit sad that actually my like uh, shading that I was doing with the skin tone, it looked really good when I was doing it, but like now the shading kind of for the most part is kind of a lot of it's disappeared. I don't know, maybe when the, the matte coat is sprayed on there that'll be a little bit more visible again now that it's maybe just because it's got the gloss coat on there. Now maybe it's not really all that visible so I don't know, maybe that'll come back a little bit but lessons learned, like I said, I'm still not really good at painting skin tones, still kind of a learning experience for me so uh, it was looking good but it kind of disappeared so we'll see. Now for the face, I've gone ahead and painted in the mouth with a mix of, what was that, that was like a flesh color and a clear red, I just mixed a little bit of that to paint the mouth in there, and then painted the whites of the eyes, but in this case this actually came with a set of water side decals for the eyes, I'm not sure how they're going to look, if these are going to look quite good or not, I'm going to try the decals first, if the decals don't really look good then I'll have to try my hand at painting them, but I'm going to give these a go. If you're wondering what that flower logo on the Barbatos's shoulder, it actually came off of one of these um, Matt K Gachanan decal sheets, that little flower one there. Now on a different sheet, that was decal sheet E, this is decal sheet F, there's the same flower logo there without like the red kind of shield bit behind it. So this one I want to stick on her clothing, so I'm going to cut that out so she has a matching logo there. Well, call it cheating, and uh, yes, shame on me because I certainly need to practice my eye painting myself, but uh, I'd say that looks good enough. It looks good to me. Alright, I think I'm just going to go with the eye decals then. 